Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and our channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains misnamed. Not really. And today we're going to discuss the Tyrannosaurus Rex again, but this time we're going to talk about the fact that it, um, well, some argue it may not uh, be correctly named at all. The name Tyrannosaurus Rex may not be proper. The actual name, according to some, should be Monospondylus Gygus, which does not have the same ring to it. Um, at all? But let's talk about this, because it's a, it's actually kind of an interesting story that, uh, fairly recently was drawn up again. This is the story of T-Rex's questionable name. Now, Tyrannosaurus Rex is my favorite dinosaur because I am basic like that when it comes to this t particular topic. Usually, I'd be super edgy and try to pick something ridiculous. But the T-Rex has been my favorite since I was a kid. You leave me alone! You leave me alone! And I've talked about the T-Rex plenty of times before. Just last week, we discussed the story of Sue. So, I don't think the T-Rex needs any introduction around here. Even if I hadn't already talked about this animal, well, uh... You probably know roughly what a Tyrannosaurus Rex is. Even people who aren't interested in dinosaurs know what a T-Rex is. It is, by and large, the most famous dinosaur on the planet, right up there with Triceratops and Stegosaurus. But as I said in the intro, is the name T-Rex correct? And what I mean is, when it comes to a naming scheme, generally, in terms of any kind of biology, the assumption is that the first person who finds remains and describes them, gives them a name, is the one who therefore continues to have the assumed name. That's the name everyone goes with, that's what they're called. They found it, they get to name it, they described it, and therefore that is now that animal's designation. And paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne was the one who named the actual second T-Rex skeleton in 1905. The first was actually discovered by Barnum Brown in the year 1900. But it was Osborne who gave it a name, and that's the name that everyone stuck with, and frankly, it was an amazing name, Tyrannosaurus Rex. It translates to Tyrant Lizard King. Yeah! It was a good, strong name, and it resonated with people. Everyone knows what a T-Rex is, even to this day. Osborne nailed it down. It's probably one of the best names for any animal ever in that regard. But the problem is that the remains that were discovered in 1900 were not actually the first remains that were found of a T-Rex. Technically, the first remains ever unearthed to scientific knowledge of a T-Rex were found in 1874 by Arthur Lakes near Golden, Colorado. Lakes was a geologist. And still later, in the early 1890s, John Bell Hatcher, a paleontologist this time, got postcranial elements in eastern Wyoming. These fossils were, at the time, believed to be from an entirely different species, Ornithomimus grandis. Of course, now even the species they were talking about is considered Dinodon, but that's another story entirely. By the way, the remains were not either of these animals, they are now considered to be Tyrannosaurus rex remains. But they were attributing it to an already named species. So obviously they wouldn't use the name of a species that has already been described, that'd be stupid. But, in 1892, Edward Drinker Cope found two vertebral fragments of a large dinosaur. He thought that the fragments belonged to what he would have called at the time an agathalmid which nowadays we would know as a ceratopsid, like Triceratops. And he named them Monospondylus gigas, which means giant porous vertebra. A really boring name, Cope, not gonna lie. No disrespect, I'm just saying. But this was a reference to the numerous openings for blood vessels that were in the bones. And those remains continued to be assumed to be a ceratopsid until 1907, when John Bell Hatcher again realized that they were that of a theropod not a ceratopsid. 
Osborne actually recognized the similarity between M. Gygus and T. rex as early as 1917, and by that point one of the vertebrae had actually been lost. But due to how fragmentary M. Gygus was, Osborne didn't cinemize the two genuses because it didn't make sense to him at the time. There just wasn't enough to go off of with the knowledge that he had. And he instead considered M. Gygus indeterminate. Basically, they didn't know what it was, and they weren't sure and didn't want to make any assumptions without finding more remains. And the whole thing was kind of put to rest for nearly a century. During that time, Tyrannosaurus Rex rose to fame and remained so for an extremely long time. But M. Gygus still hung in the background as a thing that wasn't even known to be a thing. No one knew what it was. Is it a thing? Is it a real thing? We don't know. But the issue cropped up again in June of 2000, when the Black Hills Institute found about 10% of a T-Rex skeleton, known as BHI-6248. If the name Black Hills Institute sounds familiar, yes! This was another dig that was being conducted by Peter Larson. How did you know, Larson? What did you do this time? Well, nothing illegal, but he was the one that argued that the site that they were digging on was the same site where the original M. Gygus remains were found, and therefore, these T-Rex remains that they had just discovered must therefore be the other parts of that vertebra. And, 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 if that was the case, that would mean that M. Gygus was described first, and therefore, the Tyrannosaurus Rex name was invalid, because Larson says so, and... Yeah, but there are so many problems with how stupid that is. Now, Larson is correct with the notion that in the rules of paleontology, the first name would indeed take priority. If Gygus had been properly described first, then Rex would no longer be a thing, and we would call the creature M. Gygus instead. And Larson even told the Associated Press at the time that it puts the name Tyrannosaurus Rex in peril. Need I remind everybody? that Larson is not actually a paleontologist, he has a bachelor's in geology. He's not exactly a non-expert, but, you know, Larson, you went to jail, don't, 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 just don't. Because there's a lot of problems with his claim. Even if they were on the original site where M. Gygus had found, proving that the remains that they found in 2000 are part of the same animal as the original vertebra would be kind of hard to do. I mean, there's a way you can do it, but remember, 10%, that is not a lot of animal to go off of. They might be able to put it together and perhaps show evidence that it was part of the same creature at one time, but it'd be a hard sell. Christopher Brachu, who is a paleontologist, concurred with this point, basically saying that Larson would have to demonstrate that he's got the original animal, and Brachu doesn't think that can be done. And as of the making of this video, it's been nearly 23 years since those bones were found. And you may recognize that we don't call this animal Monospondylus gigas. We call it Tyrannosaurus rex. That's for two major reasons. One, Larson was never able to prove conclusively that the bones he had found were part of the original M. gigas vertebra. So the whole argument was irrelevant. But the other issue is this. Because some would say that even without Larson's find... The original vertebra are believed to be that of a tyrannosaur. So if that's the case, wouldn't M. Gygus be more valid because those were the first remains found and the first named? And technically, yes, that is correct. Also, no. The reason for this is, um, well, how I started this. Everyone knows Tyrannosaurus Rex. The name is just too famous. It captured public attention. It's one of the first animals people think of whenever you say the word dinosaur. Tyrannosaurus rex did not just leave its mark on the world for millions of years during the late Cretaceous period. It's left a cultural footprint in the minds of human beings nowadays. For paleontologists to go out of their way to change that just because of an arbitrary rule, all because of one vertebra, would be, frankly, asinine. It makes no sense to do that, and when Larson started talking about this, many pointed out that they were concerned that this would really confuse children, and frankly, I think it would just confuse everybody. Everyone knows it as T-Rex. Everyone has called it a T-Rex for over a century now. It's T-Rex! And even if paleontologists decided to officially change the name, no one's gonna call it that. So why bother? There's no point. 
T-Rex is just too big to kill, both literally and figuratively. Even if it was unanimously decided that, yes, technically we should change the name, no one's actually going to do that unless they're a pretentious jerk, and even then they'd probably be overruled by the rest of the sensible paleontologists in the scientific community just because of how famous Tyrannosaurus Rex is. That's the name. Everyone's accepted that, and there's no need to change it. Plus, would you rather one of the largest carnivores that ever walked the planet be named Tyrant Lizard King or Giant Porous Vertebra? I, I think you already know the answer to that question. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.